All right, guys. I'm sitting here with Josh. We're just, you know, kind of relaxing here, and we're just going to shoot a quick video on something that I feel important. And Josh was going to verify that because he is an EMT, so he knows a little bit about medical conditions and what they entail, how miserable some of them can be, and what we're going to be going over is the edibility test. Okay, and I'm not a fan. I am not a fan of the edibility test, and I have taken classes on wild edibles and medicinals and one of my instructors pointed something out that just you know sealed the deal for me he says you see this plant right here I don't remember the name of it though and if I uh, I might message him and get the name of it for you and let you guys know but he says you see this plant right here he goes that plant right there will pass the edibility test but if you consume it it'll cause a severe poison in you a miserable time or kill you causes kidney failure so why would you go out into the bush and risk it? Well, let's go over a couple points. Like, you have two weeks at minimum to survive without food, okay? Usually it's three weeks. You can probably go a month, maybe even more, okay? Your body should have no health effects with two weeks without food, okay? Now, if you go a month without food, yeah, it's going to start hurting. You're going to be, you know, seeing some health factors. But most survival situations, or being lost in the woods, whatever the case is, you probably don't need that food that bad, okay? Because then plants, you know, plants only provide, veg vegetation gives you maybe one to 200 calories per pound. Meat gives you 1,500, fat gives you 3,500, okay? That's per pound. It's a huge difference, okay? So you're better off going after meat anyways. But if you know plants, that's a different story. If you understand what those plants are and what they offer and what you can do with them medicinally and edibly, then you're, you're in a beneficial state. People who don't know that have to go to this thing called the universal edibility test, sticking something to their eye, sticking it to your skin, which can cause irritation. I mean, what if you don't know what poison ivy is? You know, that waxy leaf might look like, oh, that'll make a good tea. Well, rub it on your skin, you know what happens. Poison sumac. You might see the berries. Um, certain berries, you eat a berry, you know, just a little bit of it causes kidney failure. Okay, it'll cause dialysis. Let's have uh, Josh explain what dialysis is like. Um, dialysis is actually the process of cleaning your blood because when you go into kidney failure, your kidneys stop filtering filtering your blood the way they should so basically what you have to do is every other day go to a clinic where they stick two gigantic needles in your arm and a fistula in your arm which is basically a giant throbbing vein inside of your arm or in a port in your chest that goes into your heart um, but it takes blood out these two giant 16 gauge needles they put in your arm and one takes blood out, puts it through a filter, through a pump that's with the same rate as your heart, pumps it back through the other needle, back into your veins, and back into your body. And you have to do that every other day, and it takes four to six hours every other day. And So are people usually pretty miserable that are on dialysis? They don't want to go. Nobody wants to go to dialysis. Um, a lot of people can go there by themselves. The patients that I take um, are bed-bound, and they still have to go because they still need, no matter what your condition is, whether you can stand up and drive yourself there or have to go by ambulance, you still have to go or you're going to die because the toxins in your blood will kill you. So there you have it with dialysis. Um, eat the wrong berry, eat the wrong plant, that's what's going to happen. Okay, now another factor is you might find something, okay, well I'm just going to eat this because it passed that ability test. And then all of a sudden, you get out of your survival situation in three days, okay? You're out. You're, you're good. You're, you're home. You're back in civilization. Well, come to find out, it's a plant that has its effects show up five days later. So you die after you get out of your survival situation when you would have made it just fine without eating anything for those three days, okay? So what we're kind of getting at here is you probably are better off waiting until you are super hungry to eat something, but 
Even better yet, study the plants beforehand. Go foraging, take some classes on edible plants, wild plants, medicinals, okay? If you do that beforehand, you prevent this thing altogether, okay? I will never use the edibility test because I've seen what some plants can do. If you go ahead and test water hemlock, you're asking to die. I mean, you, you can die from that plant. It'll kill you. Just from testing it. Just, just from, I mean, if you stuck it to your mouth and just swallowed a little piece of it, you know, say it passed the other parts of that test and you put a little piece in your mouth and swallowed it, that's it. You know, you're pretty much a goner. It comes in contact with those membranes, those porous membranes in your mouth and your nose, um, those capillary bread, beds that take in toxins really, really easily, like the inside of your lungs or your mouth. And that's it. It doesn't. It doesn't affect your skin because that's what your skin is for. Is to protect against toxins. It's what it's designed to do. Your mouth doesn't do that. Your mouth absorbs things. You know. You just might. About anything. You might also. You know. Look at a. You know. Say there's yew trees in your area. You see them red berries. You know. You hear people say, oh, "Well, red's sometimes good. Blue's always good. White never is good." Well, I mean, that to me is just crazy as well. You know, know what the berry is and know what you're eating. Because if you grab a yew berry, which actually the aerial of the yew berry is edible. The seed inside, you eat that seed, which everyone says who's ever eaten it tastes good, but they're not here to tell you how good it tastes anymore because it stops your heart, okay? So if you were to grab them berries, you know, you might have heard, well, I heard yew berries were edible. The yew tree's toxic. Well, you might have forgot that the seed's toxic. Or you did the edibility test on the berry itself and found, well, the berry seems edible. And then you just, you didn't think about the seed. On the inside of the that, fruit. Yeah, you put that seed in your mouth and eat it. And then, whoa, oh, the seed kind of tastes good too, so it must be edible. Wrong. You just stopped your heart. You just gave yourself a death sentence. Okay? So, that's another factor. Berries, plants. Um, Moral of the story is don't eat what you don't know. Yeah, you know, it just makes no sense to... You know, if you're in a survival situation that sucks as it is, but why make it even worse by putting a potential irritant on your skin or in your eye or in your mouth or something that could actually kill you? Mushrooms? Don't even bother. I mean, mushrooms are the opposite of plants. 97% of them are toxic. And there's some mushrooms that can send you to the hospital and you get there, you're sick feeling, you feel like, you know, you need to be in the hospital. So you're there, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I feel good. You start feeling better, and then you die. Well, there's mushrooms that do that. There's mushrooms where you eat them and you feel sick, and then a few days later you feel good, but then you die, because that's that's what it does. It makes you feel good right before you die, if that calm isn't wonderful. Calm before the storm. Yep, calm before the storm. There was a, a berry in Florida that I learned about, and it's called the Rosary Pea, okay? It's a thousand times more toxic than arsenic. The Seminoles used to use it to make poison darts. So, what do you think is going to happen if you use that to test as the edible berry? Well, it looks it looks wonderful because it's black and red. Okay, so you go ahead and you test that, and you're like, well, maybe this is good. Well, you just poisoned yourself. Okay, you get that on your fingers, touch it in your mouth. It's probably going to make you sick just touching the pores on your skin because everything that hits your skin goes in your body. Okay, so the rosary pea in Florida is just lethal. I mean, it's the most toxic thing in North America, I'm pretty sure. The most toxic thing found in nature in North America. And I saw it right in a park. It's in a park is where I saw it. So, I mean, kids could even accidentally grab this thing. But if you were out in the wild and saw it, thought you needed some berries while you're in Florida, you might think, oh, well, it's got red in it, maybe it's edible. <coughs> well, it's wrong decision again there. So there's multiple things out there that can actually just cause you more harm. You know, the, the edibility test is something I, I've never agreed with. I never felt comfortable just testing plants on my skin or by my eye or touching it to my tongue. If I don't know it, I don't touch it, and that's just the way I am. There's a plant that'll pass all of that and still kill you if you ingest it. So it's just not worth it. I don't agree with it. And Josh explained to you what dialysis is like and a lot of these plants, that's what it'll do. Some berries, some plants will cause kidney failure, which you're either going to be put on dialysis or you're going to be dead because of kidney failure. And you heard what Josh said about 
dialysis, it's not a very enjoyable thing. So I don't recommend the edibility test to anyone that I will teach at my school and to anyone that I ever talk to about um, plants because I have studied a lot of plants. I do know a lot of plants in Michigan and in Florida and in Tennessee and I learned them through one at a time, studying them, taking classes, studying each plant individually, making sure there's no look-alikes. It's a, it's a long process and it's a lot of work, but you know what? You'd be amazed where you could be in five years, okay? Five years of studying that, you'd be amazed where you could be. So just start studying one at a time. Get yourself prepared first. And that's one of the models of Fear Not Survival School is preparedness is a must. Okay, if you're in any type of situation where it could go bad, if you're a pilot, camping, hiking, fishing, hunting, any of the above, okay, you need to be prepared. You need to know certain things so you can make it out alive. And the first thing people want to think of is, well, there's the edibility test. That's, that's all I need to learn. That's what the military does, so that's all I need. Well, that's wrong. That's not what you need. I, I think it's a false, false topic to talk about shouldn't even be taught because it just can get people killed so go out there study some plants get to learn them and you know pass that knowledge on to other people so they learn them and uh, go out with groups look for plants take pictures write notes down go back look it up pick up fruits find what fruits are edible and what aren't you know just like you know another thing in Florida Another fruit to look at is wild apples, okay? I found them all the time in Florida. And what they do is you can eat them. They're very, very bitter. You can eat them, but if you touch them seeds to your eye, it'll cause blindness, okay? So what if you tested the edibility test on your skin, worked your way up to your eye? You know, I don't know if that's still in that ability test or not, touching it to your eye. I know it used to be. But uh, if you touch that to your eye, I mean, you're going to go blind, so there's multiple plants out there that can, you know, they're, they're chemical powerhouses is what plants are. They're full of chemicals. And that's what a lot of drugs are made from. Yeah. Actually, I mean, all drugs are made from plant-based. All your medicines today, they come from plants. And, you know, some of them say right on the bottle, don't take this in large amounts. Well, that's because it's bad for you in large amounts. You know, something might pass that ability test, but you eat this much of it, now you're going to be sick. You know, oxalis is one of them. Oxalic acid, you shouldn't eat too much of it sparingly. So it's good to learn. We just wanted to shoot at you real quick on that because it's kind of been weighing on me. I felt like I need to put a video out on that because uh, I don't feel enough people talk about that. You know, a lot of people talk about the edibility test. You know, this is how to do it, but no one talks about the the precautions. You know, how dangerous it is. It's it's very dangerous. Plants can be the number one killer for you in a survival situation if you use the wrong one. You know, the animals out here will probably not even bother you, but a plant, you know, poison ivy, all that stuff, it's going to be all around you and cause problems, cross contamination. Uh, there's just something on preparedness. Tyler was talking about preparedness earlier. If you know you're going out in the woods, tell your wife, tell your girlfriend, tell, tell your mom where exactly you're going. When I go backpacking, I tell my wife the trails I'm going on, the campsites I'm staying at, where a potential place for me to be found is in a designated time that if I'm not home by call the rangers uh, to start looking and don't don't make your don't make your don't show up time or don't make that phone call time at dark make it a couple hours before dark so that they can get all the resources together and if you are going out in the woods one thing you can't find in the woods is a good whistle that will help you if you're if you're up here like we are, or you're you broke your leg down by the stream, that's a hundred feet away, or it may be a mile away from your campsite. Take that whistle with you because you break your leg down there. Nobody's gonna know that you're down there, but that whistle you can can be heard, especially through these mountains. It'll echo everywhere. Yeah, you know, and those are things right there that can help you prevent having to use the edibility test because you left the game plan so you know there's a good chance you're going to be out of here in a couple days okay they're going to find you they're going to look for you if your wife comes screaming to the rangers my husband did not come home when he said he was going to come home or whatever the case is that way you know okay i just got to make it two days 24 hours one day three days 
You can do that without eating anything, okay? Yeah, you're gonna have a couple hunger pains. That's the first sign of... It's not gonna be fun. Yeah, it's not gonna be enjoyable, but, you know, if you study them plants and you know what there is, you might have a couple bounties. But if you didn't, that at least you know that, you know what, I'm gonna make it out of here in three days. I can I can last a month. With the, with the mental capacity, you can go a month, trust me. Okay, it's all a mind game. You know, the three weeks thing, that's for people that, you know, are semi-strong. Two weeks, you're not mentally there. You're just, you're weak in your mind. And that's why they say 90% mental, 10% physical. Because it really is mental. And I put myself in survival situations and seen, you know, after one day how hungry I was. But it's all mental. You just got to talk yourself through it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's a good point that Josh brought up because it actually applies to this. You leave a game plan, you know you only got a few days to be out there. You don't have to worry about eating some crazy plant and killing yourself when the rangers find you three days later and you would have been fine if you just didn't eat that plant. So. And instead of them walking you out on a horse, you're going out in a bag. Exactly. And no one wants to do that. So we hope you guys take this information and pass it on. Uh, we'll be signing off here. We're going to go ahead and get our hike out of here. Take care.